So just to mention that this is the second time I record this test. Um, Wilson sent me a unit some months ago and I tested it. I listened to it against some other buffers I have and I wasn't very happy. And I figured it had to be because they had decided to go with the one mega ohm input impedance rather than the more standard five to 10 mega ohms on other buffers. And I felt it was lacking some depth in the low end. I let Ole Wilson know uh, before I published the video and he was very eager to try to make a new version with a 10 mega ohm input. So after a while he told me he had done it. I think it's a great improvement. There is more bottom end in the 10 mega ohm version. Later in the video I'll make a um, comparison between the 1 mega ohm version, which I still have here, and this new 10 mega ohm version. Today I'm really, really excited to be reviewing the brand new Wilson Gain 1. It's a buffer. They call it a buffer pre-up. No, they don't. They call it a buffer because that's just what it is. It's a buffer. It's discrete. It's got a beautiful form factor and it comes complete with some Velcro attachment system to attach it to the tailpiece of the instrument. So I've been a Wilson K4 pickup user for a generation almost since the early 90s. So what is a buffer? I've made a rather nerdy video about buffers uh, elsewhere on my channel. I link to it below, unless I can figure out how to put a link on screen. Not sure if I can do it, but it can be done. Anyway, the short version is that when you connect uh, a piezo pickup, which is most uh, acoustic instruments pickups, um, to the input of an amplifier expecting a magnetic pickup, which is the pickup on most bass guitars, for instance, then you get a mismatch of impedances. A piezo pickup is very, has a very high impedance and a magnetic pickup has a low impedance. So when you plug a very high impedance pickup into the input of your bass amp, it loads the signal. We don't have to understand what that is, but the effect of loading the signal is that you don't get the full frequency spectrum. For us bass players, most notably, you get a cut of the bottom frequencies, which is the opposite of what we want. So this thing uh, takes the ultra high impedance uh, signal from your pickup and converts it to a lower impedance that suits the input of your bass amp or your mixing desk or the DI box or whatever, giving you the full frequency spectrum of your instrument which is a good thing. It doesn't color the sound, there's no EQ, there is no, no nothing, no compression, nothing like that. It simply buffers the signal and that can sound boring, but it's really, really important. I'm gonna show it with two examples now. I'm gonna play a small thing on the bass uh, directly into my uh, sound card. Oh, and by the way, this sound card input is really low impedance. I just wanted to make a really easily audible um, demonstration of what happens when you load a piezo pickup. But listen to it, I'm plugging into the same input with the buffer, so everything gets sorted out. Um, yeah, so on to the examples. Now, same kind of thing, but through the gain one. You can clearly hear the difference, right? You get the full spectre through the gain one. The theory of loading suggests that you want to have an input impedance around 10 times the impedance of your pickup. So if the Wilson pickup has a, at least a 1 mega ohm output, you would want a 10 mega ohm input to balance it out. 
most guitar amps or bass guitar amps are around 250 to 500 kilo uh, ohms, so it's way too low. Um, and the original gain one that they sent me had one mega ohm input. I felt this was a little bit too little. I tested it and I tested it against a few other buffers that I have. And I came to the conclusion that it wasn't really up to the task it was designed for. And I told the manufacturer, I told Wilson this, that I was kind of disappointed that it was just one mega ohm. And they listened. They asked me to hold the video, which I did. And then with their engineers, they developed a 10 mega ohm version, which is what I have here. So that is some serious attention to the customers and to the musicians. So now, like I promised, let's check out the difference between the one mega ohm version and the 10 mega ohm version. Um, so I'll play kind of the same kind of thing. I'm just going to play a low C or a C on the A string just to do one note, just play uh, some, some quarter notes on that. And I'll cut back and forth. I'll label the versions for each time I cut, but I'll just cut back and forth between them and you can see if you can hear the difference. Please wear good headphones for this or else you'll just sound like it's the same recording. So it's just to demonstrate what happens from one mega ohm input to 10 mega ohm. It's very slight, but it's there. In my ears, there's a real difference. There's a fullness to the tonal spectrum, especially in the lows, but also in, in the lower mids, actually. I think it just opens up the, the sound of the instrument even more when, it, when, it, when the input is at 10 mega ohms. So go back, listen to it a few more times, really zone in through headphones, like a good pair of headphones, and, and see if you can hear the difference. Um, it just gives you more of your tone basically. The thing with this box that really got my attention is a sleek design. It's small uh, without being flimsy. It seems very solid, solid metal construction, no loose parts, no nothing. So the beauty of it is that you can have it attached to your base and thus you can use a very short cable from your pickup into the buffer. All the other buffers I have, they sit on the floor. I need to use at least a meter or two of a jack cable to plug it in. And that can pick up some noise on the way because of this really high impedance of the pickup. It's got an inbuilt battery that charges up here through a 12 volt charger that they include. And it lasts for, they say it lasts for like two days of playing. Uh, I haven't tested exactly how long it lasts, but it, it lasts a long while. And I would bring the, the charger to any gig, just in case if, if you run out, you want to have the charger. They say that you're not supposed to charge it while playing, but it works. I've tested it up against all my other D, all my other buffers. And what I love about it is that it's simply a buffer. There is nothing else. There is no EQ. There is no compression. There is no like phase switch and weird notch filters to figure out. It's simply Pick up in, um, low impedance signal out into your amp. So yeah, short and sweet. This is brilliant. I'm hoping to buy one of these, or I'm not hoping, I'm gonna buy this <laughs> if they'll let me keep it, uh, because I think it's a prototype for 10 mega ohm. I suggest getting a 10 mega ohm if, if they decide to manufacture both a 10 mega ohm and a 1 mega ohm, make sure if you're a bass player that you get the 10 mega ohm. We, we, we really need a 10 mega ohm input. 1 mega ohm is not sufficient. So if you're a mandolin player, probably get the 1 mega ohm because you're not going to have use for all these sub things anyway. Um, there's not much more to say really. I'm looking forward to every gig with this. This is highly recommended. Just get one. It should be in every bass player's bag. Way to go, Wilson, and big thanks for listening to uh, Musician's Inputs. Yeah.